Hello everybody, greeting from Luang Prabang, my beautiful home. For those who don't know, Luang Prabang is located in the north of Laos. It is the third largest city in the country and the most visited city in Laos. Since 1995, when it first listed as the World Heritage Town by the UNESCO, Luang Prabang has started to receive quite a lot of international tourists coming in, but not until the early 2006 when one of the Thai monarchy members come to Luang Prabang to make an offering at one of the main temples here and that's when we started to receive a lot of tourists from Thailand and then from China from Vietnam and then more and more Europeans coming in and in 2006 2007 2009 Luang Prabang has won the award from the Wanderlust magazine for three years in a row and then Bali the beautiful island in Indonesia took place to become the new hotspot of tourists in Southeast Asia and the number of tourists coming into Luang Prabang has declined a lot and just recently the Laotian Times has reported that the international tourists coming into Laos this year in 2023 has dropped down to 80% compared to 2019 so that is not a good news for all of us However, with the upcoming campaign that the Lao government is trying to promote, which is Travel Laos 2024, we hope that it's going to change something. But let's see. So anyway, for today's video, I'm going to show you this beautiful town once again. And by the way, the number of population in Luang Prabang is only 56,000 people. So when you see 430,000 people, that's the total number of population from the whole province. So Luang Prabang consists of 12 different districts having Luang Prabang the main and the largest district in the province. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. So we are walking to Big Brother Mouse, a place where you can volunteer your time to help local students to practice their English every day from uh, 9 to 11 a.m. and from 5 to 7 p.m. You can just drop in for English conversation practice with the local students. So this is where it is. Uh, it's a little bit too late now. So what you can do is you can volunteer your time and as you can see there's a chair where you can come here and you know, get to meet the local students and they talk to you, exchange the knowledge. I came here a lot when I was a novice at a time, you know, to practice my English and they also sell a lot of lots of books here. So what you can do is you can donate, uh, you can buy the books like this and then they're gonna take you to the rural area, to the school, and then you can offer these books to the children by yourself. They're doing a great job here and the person behind it is from the US and they also have a several school in Luang Prabang and in other provinces as well. Yeah, if you come to Luang Prabang and if you have spare time, don't forget to come here either in the morning or in the evenings. It is located right in the center of the city. <laughs> and there you go. Books donated for the villages. So you buy the book and then they put it here. And when they have it up, they're gonna bring these books to the village where they can give it to the children. So this is the street where monks uh, from my temple would walk in the morning for the almsgiving so they will take all the way from the temple there on the street and turn around the corner to the main street where you get to see the almsgiving in the morning now because of the winter time it starts at 6 20 uh, during the summer time is at 5 30. back before the pandemic there was a beautiful wooden house in this area in this uh, location but then it, it was caught on fire uh, yeah, and then it tear it down, so it's left empty. One of the things that you will be surprised is that in this location, in the old town area, the price of the property is unaffordable, it's crazy. Like a small house costs you uh, at least two to three hundred thousand dollars. I don't know where they get that price from. I mean, it is true that it, it, it has a lot of tourists coming in every year, but with that price, you know, maybe you can invest on something else or maybe get a nice apartment from somewhere in European city, I don't know. But spend 300,000 
dollars to afford a small house in this area. Uh, I wouldn't invest on it, to be honest. What I want to warn you is do not underestimate Lao winter because since last week it has become quite cold uh, as cold as 10 degrees in the morning uh, but now it's getting warm already I mean you wouldn't guess that a country like Laos would get this cold right I mean can you imagine in the east of the country you know in Sien Kuang province or in Samnia that is going to be much colder because they're higher up uh, so we're in the main street now so this main street, from here all the way down there, uh, this is where you get to see the monks uh, for the almsgiving ceremony every morning. So all the monks from this temple would take this road, you know, for the collect food down that way. Let's take a look at this temple first. So this is Wat Kili Temple, one of the main temples in Long Prabha. When I was a monk back in the day, I was desperate, wanting to live in this temple when I came here. A few times to uh, ask if they have a spare room for me but unfortunately there's no place for stranger Buddhist archives of Lone Prabang. There's a gallery inside you can take a look meditation exhibition Uh, you can just write your name here. I think I'll do that. Maybe not. I'm I'm a local anyway. You're most welcome. It's free. Uh, these are meditation poses. So there's many different poses of meditation in Buddhist way, like sleeping meditation or sitting meditation and even walking meditation like this one. And I think I've mentioned it before, when I was a monk back then, every year for 15 days, all the monks from town would have to go to the forest for meditation retreat. And this is what we did. So we spent lots of time, you know, meditate. Uh, and we ate only one meal per day. It was very intense, like uh, it requires a lot of physical strength and mentally strength as well because you have to wake up like three o'clock to pray and then meditate until eight o'clock. And then we had our, not breakfast because, because we ate only one meal. So people would donate milk for us to have in the morning or coffee. And then around 11.30, that's when we had our first meal and the last meal of the day. And then we pray until 4.30 p.m. And that's when we had to go back to our tent. And I sneak into the tent to sleep a few times. The second time though, I because it was rainy season, I got malaria because I got beaten a lot by mosquitoes. And so yeah, it was a good memory. Oh yeah, this is one of the most respected monks in Laos. So he used to live in Wat Sen Temple, which is down there. I'll, I'll show you later. Uh, his name is Sadhu Kamjan. Um, one of the monarchy members from uh, Thailand came to his temple to make an offering. And that's when people get to know about Long Prabang. So these are all the senior monks back in the day and they're the most respected uh, Buddhist monks in the country and many of them from the royal family and the Jonga temple for some reasons. Yeah, nice gallery. It's beautiful, very quiet though. Well, most of the monks uh, go to school, I think, because the Buddhist high school has moved to the new location. Back then, it was not far from here. So, back then, you will see a lot of monks walking on the street, you know, to their class. And it's 
beautiful but now because they moved it out of town most of the monks also have moved to the temple nearby the school and again because of the technology and all this destruction a lot of monks didn't survive many of them you know would join a temple for maybe a few years and that's it and they left it back in the in the day when i joined a temple at a the time there was no internet no cell phone so there was not a lot of destruction but but this day many monks own computer and they can use social media like facebook instagram and sort of things so of course they can see a lot of things beyond the temple like life outside a temple it can be exciting especially for those who have been living in a temple for many years and they just want to try experience different thing just like me you know back in the day when i first received my ipad as a gift from my sister back 2011 that's when i started to google and i've seen quite unusual things on the internet uh, that kind of excited me a little bit that's one of the main reasons that I decided to leave the country uh, the temple uh, because I wanted to travel and I did yeah <laughs> So again, so what's Siang Tong? This is one of the main temples in Luang Prabang. Uh, not the oldest. The oldest one is called Wat Bisun, but this one was one of the very first that was built not long after Luang Prabang was found. So Luang Prabang was found by the King Fangum in 14th century, and it became the uh, capital of Laos until 1560. And then under the rule of the King Setachirat, he then moved the capital city from Luang Prabang to Vientiane. But still, Luang Prabang is to remain the significant religious site in the country. As you see, there's so many temples in this small town. And Lo, uh, Wat Sing Tong is one of them. And I'm going to show you on the main street later on uh, with many small temples, you know, lining up from corner to corner. So, yeah, this is one of the main characters that Luang Prabang has to offer. Here in this tiny building, it has become the iconic where a lot of couples, you know, came here for pre-wedding photo shoot. It is very popular where one of the grooms or bride would pop, uh, pop their heads out of the window and then have the photographer take a photo from this angle. It looks pretty pretty, uh, beautiful. <laughs> And then uh, they also kept a very sacred Buddha image in this tiny building. It's called Praman. So every year in April, uh, they would take the Buddha image from here to the front where they build a shelter and then the locals would come and water the Buddha. In Buddhist culture, it's a sign of washing the sin. You see that? So it's a sign of uh, cleaning and, and purifying your body when you clean the Buddha statue. So that's the whole story. Uh, you see this nice tree that was decorated in the glass? This is the Bodhi tree. So Bodhi tree is symbolized a peace because the Buddha was sitting, I don't know how I can say, he became enlightenment under the Bodhi tree after seven days of meditation. So I've been to the original Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya in India. So, yeah. This temple was renovating some years ago, I think it was 2013, and it was sponsored by the US Embassy. Yeah. <coughs> I think we have to get inside at some point. I just want to show you once again um, how it looks inside. So this is peak season in Laos. So from uh, December to late January is the peak season where we have a lot of international tourists coming in. But again, this year compared to 2019, it's not a lot. You see this long 
wooden pipe. It's the pipe that they used to water the Buddha during the Lanu year. Like I mentioned before, they took the sacred Buddha Praman out of the building and put it in front of the temple there and used this long pipe as the pipe that people pour water from here and it goes all the way down to there. So these pictures on the wall is depicting the life of Lao people back in the day. As you can see, they pay respect to the monks and the animals that Lao people raise like this. This is water buffalo, you know. There are a lot of people. Let's get out. I'm not very good at filming when there are a lot of people. It's a little bit... I don't know, uh, it's better to be a little bit considerate because some people don't like being filmed. So, let's go. So inside this building is where they kept the golden coach. Um, let me show you. Don't forget to take off your shoes before you get in. Yeah, this is the coach that they uh, used during the king's funeral. And after that, they kept it here, and it becomes the temple's uh, main gallery where they keep all these old Buddha images. So this is very Lung Prabang style, as you can see this is a lotus. You know, most of the temple building would carve in this line. You know, it's beautiful. And these are the Nagas. So in Buddhist culture, Nagas is the sign of protection and the power. As you see in each temple has Naga with seven heads, you know, on the doorstep. Buddhism in Laos has mix up a little bit with animism because the country used to be animist country, uh, country before the Buddhist was introduced back in the day and we still believe in the spirit and something like that so it's 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 good for us to have you know some comfort or the the, the protector you know in front of our house or in front of the building like my guys one of them so yeah it's the main pier uh, down there is the Mekong River where most of the guests who visit the temple and then they take the boat from the pier all the way up to Park Okay from here. Yep. This is Mekong River. As you can see, these are the big boats that are taking uh, tourists from here to the Cape and also they can do the sunset from here down as well in the evening. So this is the end of the peninsula where the two confluence of the rivers met. So the green one is Nam Khan River and the brown one is Mekong. You can't see much from here but I'm going to show you up there. Uh, where you can get to see the two different colors of the rivers joining. Uh, back before the dam was built down there, during the dry season like this, there is a little island pop up in here where you can enjoy a nice view of the sunset in the evening. But unfortunately, after the dam, you know, you don't get to see it anymore because the, wa the level of water can't get lower than this point. So yeah, that's very sad, but you still can go to the other side and sit by the, those rocks and enjoy the nice view in the evening. Uh, it used to be the bamboo bridge that, you know, connect from this side to the other. But I don't think this year they're going to build it because um, there's an erosion project coming out that they're going to build the concrete along the river to protect the landslide because every year during the high water season, it washed away all the, the, the land and um, it's good to have to build it now and there you can see over there those are the main island in town 
and later on in a month or two there will be a lot of cucumbers and uh, people will build a hut as you already see there there are a few huts there so on the weekend people from town would cross over there and just enjoy the papaya salad or cucumber salad or whatever it's nice but until then it's gonna be very hot this is probably the best viewpoint where you can get to see the confluence of the two rivers joining it's called viewpoint cafe i'm not gonna go there i've been there many times um so yeah but there is a nice path that you can walk down to see it so in case you ever get lost this is where you can find yourself i think right now right here so just by the end of the peninsula, Kalong Prabha is surrounded by these two rivers. It's beautiful. I don't think you're ever gonna get lost because it's a small town anyway. Right. This is used to be my uh, favorite escape when I was a monk because the school is not far from here. So it was up there. So during the school break, many monks would come here. Uh, sit down here and practice their English with tourists. Like I said, the bamboo bridge started from here to the other side where you can walk to the weaving village. It's only 15 minutes walk from here. Uh, now, not anymore. You see the rock there, uh, that's where many people die. You know, they jump from the main rock to the pool and then their heads hit the rock and they die. You know, tragedy after tragedy for many years and suddenly it was banned at some point, you know, there was a big sign, do not swim in this area. And because of some law, people, they're quite superstitious and they believe there's some protector or some, some, some spirit in there that doesn't like people, you know, bothering the, them and that's the cause of the death. And in fact, it's just an accident. And this area used to be called, how are we going to say, before the internet, you know, young people would come here and they sneak out other home, you know, to meet each other here, it becomes a place in Lao we call it Sun Kot. It's referring to a place where people come here to meet up for, you know, for flirting and ended up having sex. And many times, you know, they get caught. And then this place got its nickname called Sun Kot, which is quite oh, embarrassing. Anyway. So this is the UNESCO World Heritage Office in Long Prabang. I, how can I say, oh, if I ever had a house in this area, if I were to renovate it or to rebuild it, it's so hard because you have to get the approval from this office and it's such a pain in the ass, that's why not many people want to buy the house in this area. Uh, let's say if your house is about to collapse and then you have to wait for them to approve it and it costs a lot of money, it consumes a lot of time. So most of the time, people just, just leave it that way. This is very typical Long Prabang rice cracker. So this is sticky rice. So they, they cook sticky rice and then they make it round like this and they dry it for a few days and then they deep fry it. It's quite yummy. This is the wooden bell, so every temple has it. So every morning before monks come out of the temple for the almsgiving ceremony or for collect food, they would hit this bell and that is the giving the sign for the local people to prepare, saying that, okay, we're coming out of the temple now, you prepare the food. <laughs> it's not like demanding, but that's the, um, the tradition that, you know, uh, monks have been doing for generations, uh, years and years ago. You see in this area, like I said, the temples are very small, the main building, very Long Prabang style, like ancient style. You didn't get to see this in other province, but only in Long Prabang. The roof is quite low and the building is there. It's very small and very cute. <laughs> Monks are working. Yeah, this is this temple and then this one is another temple. It just has this thin, low 
wall, you know, <laughs> bordering between these two. Interesting, isn't it? And then the next one is different temple. So let me show you. <laughs> Small monks. Oh, look at this. Monks live here. It's amazing how they build this tiny house with two stories. So this used to be the former Buddhist high school, this one and then Wasiputabad, which is not far from here. Uh, back in the day when I was a monk, this is one of my class, I think it, it was this one. Yeah. And now it has become a Buddhist gallery where monks do the carving and this is their workshop and their gallery. So the Buddha image and the paintings. Are so these are all painted and carved by monks. Wow. This one I guess is crocodile eating fish. And this is Naga. And this is the tail of the crocodile. And this is fish. Wonderful. And this one looks like a tail of the Naga again. Yeah, oh wow, this, this is eagle, I think. Oh, look. This is wonderful. The Buddha face painted in this shell. Wow. Beautiful work. Very cute gallery. I bet this is the workshop. Yeah. Oh, all the machine. So this young man who work here, they used to be monks before and they left the temple and with their knowledge and their creativities this is what they do. So they carve all these beautiful Buddha statues and then place it in the gallery room. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day when this place used to be the school, you know, monks and novices would come out here during the school break having their lunch in one of these tables. It's lovely, but now hmm, it's quiet because the school has moved outside of town. And this is Wat San Temple. Uh, one of the main temples. So the picture of the monks at the gallery that I show you, he used to live here. Uh, he was one of the most respected monks in Laos. Uh, he passed away in 2008 and that changed a lot um, for a Buddhist association. And he, he had done a lot for this temple. For example, he renovating this one so back in the day, I'm not sure if you can find the old photo, there was only this giant Buddha statue that was half destroyed and then he managed to gather some donation and rebuild this beautiful shape of the Buddha and the building to cover it. Volkswagen. It was donated and served the monk who passed away in 2008, the one that I mentioned. Beautiful. I like the color. It's so cute. It looks like candy. I can eat it. Anyway. This reminds me of the the pagoda that I visited in Hui. You know, uh, there's a a similar car like this belonged to the monk who set himself on fire to protest the the government of Vietnam something during the war between the South and the North Vietnam. I forgot. Yeah, it's very similar. I have mentioned it before, I'm gonna say it again. Because so many foreigners come here to Laos to do the business and the Chinese are different from the rest. So what the Chinese do is that when they first set up the business, they hire the local people and within a year, 
once they learn and understand the local language they fire all the local people and have their own people coming in to work here so in the end you know you kind of ask yourself you know what the local people benefit from them i don't know uh they adapted to the new environment so quickly like within one year they can speak the local language and they do their own business so we're back to the main main street so this is called Sisawang Wong Road as you can see it's quite busy many uh, restaurants shops and boutiques are located in this, in this area further down there there's a former king palace or now is the national museum I have been there many many times I don't think I'm gonna get in there again as a local person I don't have to pay for the ticket anyway Maybe I'll get in, but we're not allowed to film inside. So one of the things that you might have noticed already is that there are no exchange places in this street. No more. I have done another video talking about the, the inflation and how La government is trying to change it. So back then, on this main street, there are a lot of money exchange places, but the government closed it down, and that is to prevent, you know, the car foreign currency from flowing out of the central bank. And I don't know if that changed anything. Here, you still can see it, but these are the banks, so they are certified places. So they get the approval from the government, but the rate is not very good. So this is the modern style temple you would see in other part of Laos. The, this one is not temple, it's called Prabang Hall, where they kept the sacred Buddha Prabang in here. Let's go up there to get a better view. It's getting hotter now. Yeah, the view is much better now. So this is the Luang Prabang National Museum, which is the former King Palace. I think it has been converted into museum since I don't know what year. Yeah. Here is where you can go up to the mountain for the sunset view. Uh, this is one of the steps. You can also go up from the other side of the mountain as well. And in the evening from 5 until 10 p.m. This from there until the end of the street is uh, full of tents because it's night market street. So you'll get to see a lot of um, stalls and souvenir shops selling all kinds of things. So over there is Loan Prabang Library, in case you want to read some book, you just get in there. Uh, it opens from Mondays to Fridays, uh, 8 until 4. And this is the Morning Market Street. So Morning Market start from 4 a.m. until 10 a.m. every day, where you can see all the fresh produce in this market. Oh, in case you wonder, this is the national radio station. It's been here for ages. And it's amazing that they haven't moved it yet. It's located right here in the center of the old town. And this building used to be the central bank back in the day, but now it has turned into a hotel called Kunming Hotel. I think it's owned by the Chinese again. So here is the main food court in the evening from 5 until 10. It's full of people here. It's where you can come and try the all sorts of food, local food in here. It's very busy. And this is the iconic building in Long Prabang, the tallest building in this area, like four stories. Uh, up there, there's a nice rooftop bar. Um, they have nice uh, cocktail as well. So this is it, this is the end of the night market. So, Reggie, 
proud about is is where they're gonna drop you off so when you come to Long Prabang and if you don't know where your hotel is this is the main drop off and then you can walk from here to your hotel because most of the hotels are located in the in this area anyway so from down there the Quite many uh, small alley street is full of guest houses and hotels. So this is your spot, the end of the night market. And right there, this is the tourist information center. And then just over there, the yellow building is the uh, post office where you can post your things to your families and friends back home. Okay, so before we finish our video, I'm gonna show you where you can change your money, which is where the gold shops are. These are gold shops. So from that building all the way to there, these are all gold shops where you can change your money. Got it? Do not change it at the bank because you will get very low rate. So change it in one of these shops, gold shops. So yeah, in case you get lost, just Google and search dollar market. And when you find this one, DNT supermarket, just right opposite of this one, these are all gold shops. All right, this is it for today's video, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I wish you all the best uh, for the upcoming new year. And um, take good care. Happy new year. Bye-bye.